Hi. It's a week past my biopsy and it's benign. My fibroadenoma came back as all the samples are benign. And that is wonderful. But I've um, come to realize that there is no finish line. And that means I've got to rewrite this story. And I put everything in terms of story because I did my undergrad in English literature and I studied, you know, great works of story. Um, and then I did a master's of fine arts in creative writing. So it was story, story, story. That's all I studied. And so I kind of, my whole world is this matrix of story through which I see it. And, um, I started out this screening journey. I didn't even know I had a story about it, like a preconceived one, because I was it wasn't until I was in the story that I realized that my my rough draft didn't match up with reality at all. And part of that includes um that there's still a microlobulation through my fibroadenoma and my fibroadenoma is still unusual with its macro lobulations around the edges and the micro lobulation through the middle is LCIS which is not cancer however it's just one more increased risk factor so despite the biopsy doctor saying we'd check it again in six months and check it again in another six months and then check it in again in a year and then then we wouldn't have to worry about it if there had been no changes but if you get the biopsy now then you don't have to worry about it now and yes it came back benign so in in theory I don't have to worry about it now my doctor however this has pointed out that the whole reason why I needed a bilateral ultrasound is because the MRI had seen a 0.5 centimeter unusual finding in my right breast at 12 o'clock. And um, even though the ultrasound couldn't see it that day, they want to check that again. And they certainly want to check the 1.6 centimeter fibroadenoma for changes, you know, is that LCIS starting to calcify? Is it, is it, is it just, is there anything happening with it? Because it's just, I wouldn't have, I mean, fibroadenomas do happen in menopause and postmenopause, but it's less common <laughs> and it's less common. The lobulations are less common. So that's, you know, something she wants to check again in six months and not with ultrasound. She wants to have the two MRIs to compare, especially because the ultrasound didn't even see the one at five o'clock that the MRI did. So there's no finish line. <laughs> Some of us will go into screening and have abnormalities that just constantly need to be checked and that's that's good that's where our medical system is and this happens with i'm with a variety of cancers if you cervical cancer that's a pap smear every year for us women and um colon cancer um Thankfully, they have an FIT test um, so that you don't have to actually have a colonoscopy. But if you have a family history, you know, um, my husband's uncle is having some precancerous polyps removed pretty much as we speak. So, I mean, and um, my hubby's aunt died of colon cancer. So, so when you have a family, there's no finish line. And it's, it's wonderful that we have a medical system that offers pre-screening because... Catching cancer early directly correlates with positive, more positive outcomes. Simple as that. So there's no finish line. There is no one and done. Um, we all get older and cancer screening in various ways, not just breast cancer. Um, it's just part of our future. So that's, I got to change this story to um, this is something I wonderfully get to live with. 
Um, and I, and it is, it's going to be some, some mental discipline to switch gears on this. Um, I was, I suppose it was a defense mechanism to just be resistant to screening in the first place. More than five years after my mom's mastectomy for invasive ductal carcinoma, I had a, a big wall of denial up and I, I didn't realize I was crafting this narrative of one and done that I would just tick that box there. I checked and be done with it. And that's not how it works. Um, and so now I just, I just moving forward, live my best life. Um, and there's no guarantees for any of us. I just watched season six of the crown and was reminded again that tragic day when the world felt we lost Princess Diana, even though her, her family is who really lost her. Being the public figure that she was, we all felt that loss. I, I felt it all over again watching it dramatized on a Netflix series, The Crown. And talk about life cut short. So, um, oh, and then I, I mean, King Charles is having a cancer situation of its own right now. But again, catching things early equals more positive outcomes. So, so <laughs> I've been through my dramatic cancer screening journey, but the other side is no finish line. That's what, that's my biggest takeaway. Um, and I'm super lucky. Um, I'm going to, you know, prioritize health. Um, but we have to keep an eye on my increased risk, my po because my mom's cancer was estrogen receptor positive. That's um, definitely likely that, and with my pear shape, estrogen dominance, um, I'm going to just work on um, choosing um, as best I can, you know, low estrogen foods. I'll just put up with the hot flashes because <laughs> that's just what happens as our estrogen goes down. But if I stay active, you know, I'm going to stay healthier overall. And this journey is never over. And so I probably won't come to YouTube six months from now about my MRI unless it's, um, unless there's an unusual finding, which there absolutely could be. So I just have to live my life and quit I mean, the, the biopsy was just a dramatic focal point for all my anxiety. And um, I'm a pretty anxious person. I think in my previous video, I even mentioned that the biopsy is survivable. And survivable is such, is it sounds hyperbolic even to my ears, but that's because anxiety is, is black and white. Anxiety, you don't get to live in the gray area as easily as some people that's not your natural default. Your natural default is catastrophic <laughs> and biopsy felt super catastrophic. Um, and even, you know, microlobulation of LCIS feels, feels big, but it doesn't have to be. That's your first draft. Your, your, your big feelings are your first draft and every writer knows that you get to do some rewrites after your first draft just get the words out. You got your first draft written down. A lot of times you can you hear stories of authors that are like, oh my goodness, I wrote for five hours straight. Like just get it all down. That's your first draft. But then you go back. Editing is very hard it, and it takes practice. So too is um, rewriting this no finish line cancer screening journey, which will just be ongoing the rest of my life. And luckily I live in a, in a world where we... I have this available to me. I have these screening tools available to me. And I've learned so much. Um, I didn't know I had dense breasts, you know, reasonably dense. There's A, B, C, D. I'm like C. Well, my my request for an MRI this coming up this summer says C plus. So I think that's, you know, what my density level is. Um, well, it's certainly a C, but it actually C, says C plus on one report. So, um, 
maybe I never have to go through the drama of a mammogram because for some reason I have a thing about mammograms, but um, it sounds like all the research I've done with, if you have dense breast tissue, mammograms not the best imaging for you. And all in all, it feels like this is, um, we as a society and science is working on being able to see inside our bodies and it's come so far but I still think they at the end of the day that's why I needed a biopsy they can see inside our bodies sort of but they can't see as well as they wish they could and therefore that's why biopsies exist because oh, you know it's you know, just the fact that we can see inside our bodies at all. If you go back to the science of x-ray technology, it's just like phenomenal that we can see inside at all. But um, <laughs> uh, we can't see inside really as good as we think we can. And that's why we've got the MRI. And um, certainly when things progress farther, you've got PET scans and CT scans and tons of scanning when it comes to cancer. Like imaging scanning is it's just paramount when it comes to cancer screening and um, MRI is good but no scan no image is perfect so um, but at least they'll have six months from now they'll have another MRI to go side by side and I'll get to re read the reports myself um, I don't have the pathology report myself uh, uh, yet from the biopsy I've just had the call with my doctor where she's saying you're not, we're definitely checking in six months. You know, the ultrasound couldn't see the five, the half centimeter lesion at 12 o'clock. And we got to check that again too. Um, you're not off the hook. She actually admonished me. She said, um, and unfortunately he never marked the spot. So that's a bit of a problem. I think she said problem like she wasn't happy about it and I said um I said no no she said because he didn't mark it I don't know if he got the right spot and I'm like oh he did because my fibroadenoma is palpable um he could palpate it quite easily um so I felt like I was being scolded by nanny a little bit um because you didn't let him mark it. <laughs> but um, as long as I can feel it. Now, I, I'll say quickly that some people would choose to have it removed. Just to be on the safe side kind of thing. But I actually don't need it. I like, the, I would rather have something to keep checking. Like for the next 10 years, I would love it to just stay the same or shrink or go away. But um, if they cut it out, then I would just have that would it ever would something new come back so I rather just have it and keep checking it and have that relief every time that it's staying the same um because honestly there's no cutting it out does not decrease my future chance of it like taking it out doesn't change a thing like there's it's not like I'll have a 10% less chance of it becoming cancer if I take it out. No, it actually, it'll become cancer or it won't. There's taking it out. It's not going to make a difference. And, and having something for them as a, as like a, a measure, something they can measure every year that I would prefer to have that. I think I'll, I think I'll name it. <laughs> um, Fabrica, because it's got that, that, that fabric of, LCIS in it. So me and Fabrica are just going to live our lives. <laughs> I'm not going to have a lumpectomy. Although I totally respect anyone who would choose to have um, something prophylactically done. That's, that's, that's fine if that's your choice. But I'm, I'm quite happy to have something that we can just keep checking in the future because there is no finish line even if it was taken out there's no finish line there's something over here maybe and and maybe there's something there in a, a year and maybe that's benign too but like our we change I mean oh man this is just my I've really got to change my expectation change that core story that everything stays the same obviously that is a script I have or a desire for things to stay the same and things don't stay the same so anyhow 
moving on with 2024 MRI in the summer sometime and hopefully things go good and um, because I'm going to just keep focusing on my health moving forward and uh, I wish everybody the best and thanks for coming along on this journey and learning to rewrite our stories and that's okay that that's normal and it's okay to recognize when you have a story like I haven't had a story about mammogram didn't want to do it I had a story that MRI was one and done I had a story that <clears throat> words like bilateral are scary because it applies to mastectomy um, and then I certainly had a story that biopsy was this huge, huge thing. And it was because it's the focal point of all the anxiety, but the procedure itself was okay. And, you know, within five days, it didn't even feel bruised anymore. Me and Fabrica, I can feel it even through my bra. Um, it's just a little marble. Uh, I mean, 1.6, I, I haven't actually got a marble out and measured 1.6 centimeter diameter on it but anyhow it just it's a hard little marble and uh just a little fabric through it so me and Fabrica are going to be just fine moving forward because I'm just going to work on rewriting my anxiety stories and uh live my best life <laughs>